Watch it. There's this beautiful star. A six-pointed star with two edges on each side. Things beautiful. And I turn it back in, and there it is again. That's called an inversion. That's not a reversal. So this is fire, not water. No, not air. Air. Make sure of that. Now I'm still doing a reversal, and the reversal that I want to do is I want to tell you about. Rudolf Steiner says pure thinking or sense-free thinking depends upon a reversal. A kind of reverse memory. In ordinary memory formation, the perception must come first, be present before it can be recalled to the mind. This did not come first. This is, I did not see this. This came before memory. So the emergence of, of organs of perception for the superspensable world. However, we have to do what is opposite, the cultivation of before image, before image. An image which must be created in man prior to perception and correspondingly supersensible reality. So, we'll go on with reversal. I wanted to find out what was outside this form. I found out what was in it, not even what was outside. So what I did is what they call a stellation. So there's the form. And what you do is you take all the surfaces and you run them until they run to a point. So this is from planes to points. You see that? How it works? It's going to get harder. OK. That's only these. This is only the bottom. I still got the, two, the, the two to uh, three tops and the three sides. So I did. Three sides. There's the form again. Bottom. Oh, the bottom is stellar. Yeah, it's not like that. But these sides are making these triangles. But these are the top ones. Because these are part of the How do I stellate them? How far are they out here? <coughs> here, here, where are they? So well, I found out that they're this far. Here's the stellation, stellation, stellation. And remember that this geometric form, the points is where all the energy is. Points where everything is, is happening. Not here, but here on the points. Okay. So I put all of these together and I got this upstart little seven point star. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 Now, the, the third to the last lecture Rudolf Steiner gave before he died was this one. And I saw a photograph of one of his um, chalkboard drawings of this lecture. So I sat away for it because I know what's going on in that chalkboard drawing. But he is talking about something in the earth. So in here, he says, in the center of the earth, there's a tetrahedron. Now, you know what a tetrahedron is. It's the first shape that comes in, but it's also known as fire. But it looks like a pyramid. And then he says other places here uh, that a lot of stuff, uh, the actual form of the Earth is really something of a tetrahedron, uh, a type of pyramid. Um, the Earth is really a tetrahedron, and so forth, all through this. And then he draws this picture of the tetrahedron in Europe. Well, he also gives you the points where they are. So there's one in the South Pole, there's a point in Japan, there's one in Mid-America, and there's one around Greece. Those are the points of the tetrahedron. So, let's see if I can find it. I have a tetrahedron one of these. Let's see where the third part I have. Oh, it's probably here because I can't do all the boxes. It's a tetrahedron. Put that in the earth. <coughs> Where he said it. He said it was Japan, Mid America, Greece, South Pole. I didn't work on a South Pole, man. It doesn't reach. You know what I mean? Look at that. 
<laughs> but he said it was a type of tetrahedron. So I made a tetrahedron that would work, like he said. And I had to use the same points, of course. I had to use the same side triangle. And I made it so it worked. I, I forced this to be high enough to stay in that spirit. Now you know what I'm coming to, don't you? I took my form, <laughs> same size tetrahedron, and I put it in here. That move. So, how do you prove there's something in the middle of the earth? Can't do the shovel. <laughs> 